I've done soundbar reviews in the past, and when I got wind of doing this one, I was admittedly more than a little bit skeptical. I mean, these are pretty bold claims that Sennheiser does make about the MBO line. Is it all that it's cracked up to be? Is it truly like a full replacement for a home theater system? Let's find out. The Ambio Plus is one of three soundbars from Sennheiser's Ambio soundbar range. There's the Mini, there's the Plus, and the Max. And naturally, my head gravitated towards the Max because, you know, bigger is better. But one of my colleagues from Home Theater Secrets already reviewed the Max, so the Plus was available. And Sennheiser said they would throw in the Ambio sub to help round out that system, so I jumped at the chance. The Ambio Soundbar Plus retails for $14.99 US, and the Ambio Sub retails for $6.99 US. It's an all gray affair with a gray plastic base and a mesh fabric top. The Sub is finished in a matching dark gray exterior with a simple Sennheiser logo on the bottom of the front. The top of the bar features some controls, source, Bluetooth, volume, multi, mic mute, and some indicator lights that signify a whole slew of functionality. And rather than bore you with my description of the lights and all of their functionality, I'll just leave a link down below so you can follow that and read up on the lights and everything that they do. But if I'm being honest, I didn't really rely on the lights to tell me what was going on. I had the app and the remote, which are incredibly easy to use and intuitive. And then I could audibly hear the changes take effect. And so I didn't really need to rely on the lights for anything. The one that I, noticed the most is because it was right up front on the bottom right of the soundbar, the Ambio word mark lights up telling you that the, the unit is powered on and it's a nice touch. And that's my extent of using the lights or the indicators to tell me what was going on. The remote is amazing. It's metal, it's solid, it's chunky. It feels substantial in your hand and all of the relevant functionality is available at a quick press. And if I'm being honest, I'm surprised that they included a remote because the app that you download is so well designed, so intuitive, so easy to use that like, you don't really need a remote. Though I'm happy they did include one because at night when I'm trying not to look at my phone, being able to access everything once you're all set up via the remote is perfect. This is a full featured immersive 7.1.4 soundbar. This is achieved with nine Class D amplifiers, 400 watts RMS, nine speakers, two four-inch cellulose cone woofers, seven two-inch aluminum cone full-range drivers, frequency response at 38 hertz to 20 kilohertz, audio processing with a quad-core 1.8 gigahertz SOC, state-of-the-art ambio virtualization, automated self-calibration senses the acoustics of your room and adapts to every environment, Ambio OS connectivity via Bluetooth, Apple AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, with Dolby Atmos and Google Chromecast built in. Inputs are basically everything you need. One HDMI eARC, two HDMI, one optical, one RCA, one USB for updates, Ethernet for hardwiring the bar, one microphone input for room calibration, and it also has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. The Ambio Sub features an 8-inch woofer and 350 watts RMS Class D amplifier. You can connect up to four subs wirelessly and calibrate them all individually. It's a sealed enclosure that claims frequency response from 27 hertz to 80 hertz, and the self-calibration learns the acoustics of your room. This was one of the easiest products that I've ever set up. Like Sennheiser really went out of their way to idiot-proof this soundbar, and I, for one, appreciate the heck out of it. None of the usual pains in setting up a hi-fi product exist here. You simply get it unboxed, get it into place, and then connect your source of choice, in my case an Apple TV 4K via HDMI. Then you connect the ER cable from the soundbar to your TV, and then I use the subwoofer cable from the soundbar to the sub. Then you download the app, you get it connected via Bluetooth to the soundbar, and then you start the calibration process. The game changer here is the app. I can't overstate how well-designed, intuitive, and easy the app is to use. Like, Sennheiser knocked it out of the park with this app. The app even shows you like a real-time visualization of what the calibration process looks like in your room. And it's better than like the usual progress bar or the spinning wheel of death. Like it's, 
you can see it kind of just fill in the gaps of sound and like what areas it's doing. It's really well done. Once you're done the calibration process, you can just go ahead and start using this soundbar. Or if you want to fiddle, you can do so within the app. And there's a whole host of functionality within it that you can tweak to your heart's content. Starting off with the Ambio virtualization itself, you can choose between light, standard, and boost. My reco is boost because it's maximum surround all the time. But then you can also adjust the bass, the mids, and the treble. There's six sound modes available as well. There's sports, there's news, there's music, there's movies, there's neutral, there's adaptive, and all of those modes are also available on the remote. There's also a voice enhancer that you can use in conjunction with all of the other modes. And if that's not enough, you also have a center channel adjust where you can adjust it from minus 3 dB to plus 6 dB. And then on top of all of that, there's a night mode, and you can activate that for listening at night if you don't want to torture your neighbors, which I do on a regular basis anyway. And if you muck all of that up, you can just reset it all. It's perfect. Having done a whole bunch of home theater reviews in the past year or so, I can honestly say that this isn't like a direct competitor to a home theater setup. It's an alternative. It's for people that want theater-like sound, but they don't want a speaker package and a receiver dominating the room of choice. So I ended up setting this up in two different areas. The first was in my bedroom. Recently, I downsized into a small condo that I'm renting coming from a large home. And when you live in a condo, you get a little bit more creative with the space. And my DJ shelf now exists on the feature wall of my bedroom, complete with a TV on one side. And while that sounds great in practice, I can get out of bed and jump on my turntables. When you're watching TV at night, the TV is elevated a little bit. And so therefore the Ambio soundbar is now elevated as well. Having surround sound while watching movies in bed was appealing. And this was my first run through with the Ambio Plus. And admittedly, I placed it too high, about 36 inches off the ground, making it over a foot higher than my ears when I'm lying back in bed. And the resulting Ambio virtualization and effects were nullified quite a bit and made for a less than immersive experience. So a word of advice, if you are setting this thing up, make sure it's either at ear height or lower to get the full breadth of what Ambio is able to do before judging its sound quality. The second setup was in my living room with the soundbar placed at a more realistic height on my media unit. This proved to be the best sounding configuration and where I enjoyed it the most. I started watching Shogun with the Ambio soundbar and not only does this show rule, but the sound design and the mixing is top notch. And listening with Ambio on boost, it felt like I had a dedicated center, heights, ceiling speakers, surrounds. It sounded incredible. And not only was the dialogue clear, but it was full bodied too, had lots of grit and detail. It was wonderful. The only nitpicks I have is one, I didn't feel like I had rear speakers and I wish maybe Sennheiser sold either rears or a rear module that could lead to a more immersive experience. And then the other one is the sub. It's nice and it has a decent amount of low end, but it didn't have a visceral impact and switching out to something a bit unreasonable, the QB12 subwoofer from Q Acoustics, it's a bigger sub overall. And that had a more visceral impact and more oomph down low. And I preferred that better than the Ambio sub. Though you can connect up to four subs wirelessly and control them all separately, which would probably yield better results than a single QB12, but you're looking at like a grand per sub. So that's a significant outlet. I watched night one of WrestleMania 40 during the day of night two, just cause I'm a nerd and I can. And I initially watched night one with the BMW 706 bookshelf system that I have in for review. And it's the bookshelves up front, the center channel. And I used my trusty 685 S1s as the rear surrounds. Coming off a dedicated 5.1 system to the Ambio system was really enlightening because I have much more immersion in the way of heights and surrounds coming from the Ambio than I do with the BMW system. And I would need to add so much more to this B&W system to get the added effect of what the Ambio was providing. I preferred it. And now I get it after listening to this. Like previously, I thought that a good 5.1 system was a great starter home theater system and that you can expand on that and that's the only way to go. And now after hearing this, I might have to change my tune because 
I could just get this and a sub or four and then have a great movie watching experience. And then for music, I could just have a good integrated amplifier and a pair of speakers and then not worry about having a receiver and a center channel and surrounds and ceiling speakers and height speakers and a good bit of clutter and a great deal of money. <laughs> music, it sounds okay. I mean, if you're even remotely an audiophile, and if you're watching this video, you most likely are, it's not gonna come close to a dedicated pair of bookshelf speakers and an integrated amplifier. It's just not. Music coming out of that just feels more natural, more full-bodied, more weighty, more oof overall, and I prefer that. But if this is all you have, your ears will get adjusted fairly quickly. And you can also play around with some fun spatial effects. You can, like, it'll up mix it to, like, 3D surround sound, and that's a really fun feature to play with. And again, your ears will adjust fairly quickly. But day to day, I suspect a lot of people that get this might watch a lot of YouTube or podcasts off of their TV. And for that purpose, like, this becomes a luxury listening device. Like, if I was listening to Rogan or Kill Tony or Morning Combat or any of the many podcasts and YouTube shows that I watch, like, this is perfect for that. And I'm also doing that off axis, like I'm in the adjacent kitchen cooking or shooting B-roll or doing some art. Everything is crystal clear, intelligible. It's wonderful for that use case scenario. So is this everything that Sennheiser claims it to be? Well, if you're coming from the god-awful sound coming out of your TV, then this is a godsend. It'll totally knock your socks off. And it'll feel like you have a dedicated home theater in whatever room you put this in. And then if you're looking to downsize from a bunch of speakers and a receiver, and you're worried about missing out, well, the virtualization is so good and effective that it's likely that you're going to experience spatial effects and a 3D sound that you're not getting from your 5.1 system. So, I, for one, am convinced. Now I just want to hear the max. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Cheers. And where I think this soundbar really comes in handy is like, I assume that... Oh my God, you hear that wind?